de mim. The benefit of those on the screen, it's largely informal. Uh, welcome to the first of our Hill Post 101 uh, flyer, which went out. Uh, had a little bit of confusion on it, but it, was, it wasn't a mess up. But on the back of the flyer, which we'll pick up, um, uh, we have the schedule for the rest of the year. There are going to be five more of these, and uh, they have different topics, so hopefully they'll be of interest to people. And they, more or less once a month, with a couple of months being skipped on account of the way the scheduling works out, of course, next month. With the end of being through October, for most of October, we're not going to have one of these. And uh, anyway, the schedule is, is going out. So the first of our Hill Post 101 this year is going to be exploring the laws of Chol HaMoed. Chol HaMoed the laws of Chol HaMoed are things which most people do not study. So when we go back to the basics of Hill Post Chol HaMoed, we're really going back to the, to the, uh, to the core, because uh, it's often skipped in the heat of focusing on everything else. Right? There are two Cholomoids during the year. We have the Sukkot Cholomoid, and we have the Pesach Cholomoid. And in all the studying of the laws of Pesach, everybody focuses on Chametz and Matzah, and, 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 and cleaning the house, and of course all the rules related to the Seder, and then you don't really get to the laws of Cholomoid. And of course when it comes to Sukkot, since so much focus is done with reference to studying for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and the laws of the actual Sukkah, the laws of Ulan and Esro. So again, Cholomoy usually falls by the wayside. So what is Cholomoy? Cholomoy, of course, is what we call it in, uh, in English, in the, I think the intermediate or the intermediary days between uh, the first days of Yandav and the last days of Yandav. And it carries with it a double name, Chol, which means weekday, and Hamoed, which means the Yandav. Is this even on? No. That's why this oh. is so beautiful. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sol, which is weekday, and Moe, which is the holiday. Okay, so the question is, which one is it more of? Is it more weekday, or is it more holiday? Remember, I remember when I was in camp, uh, the, uh, the learning director was a fellow with a very interesting sense of humor, and um, a lot of times a kid would go away for a Shabbos because it was his Shabbos bar mitzvah, and he'd come back afterwards and he'd tell him, Rabbi, I was at my bar mitzvah. And the rabbi would always ask him, was it more bar or more mitzvah? Which is a, um, which is a good, oh, there, there are sheets uh, floating around somewhere, They're on, the, on the chair over there. Is it more bar or is it more mitzvah? And that was his joke. And the, but the same question could be applied to the question of chol amoy. Is it more chol, is it more weekday, or is it more Moed is it more of a holiday? So, um, and actually, before we get into that question, I do want to point out if you look at the very top right on the page, where I, I photocopied the table of contents of the Shulchan Aruch, which has, I think, 19 uh, simanim, 19 sections dedicated to the laws of Chol Moed. 19. That's more than Chanukah, that's more than Purim. Okay, there's a lot to be said about Chol Moed and the rules of Chol Moed. Um, in the in the Shulchan Aruch, and I'm sure in other works as well. Most of these classes are heavily based in the in the Shulchan Aruch, but, but here you go. So the Mishnah Bura says, with reference to Chol Hamoid, it says the following. It's the first Hebrew source on the page. I'm going to translate it. Uh, you'll note that there are three portions which are underlined. And he says the following. A person must honor Chol Nakia with food and drink, um, or, or with celebratory food and drink, and with clean clothing. That a person shouldn't carry himself um, on these days as one does during the week. Now, obviously in our times we try to wear clean clothing all the time, but, but apparently it wasn't, it wasn't the common practice to make sure that, the, that a person is wearing freshly laundered clothes on a weekday in the same way that it was uh, on, for Shabbos and for Yom Tov. So the rules of Chol HaMoe are such that, with reference to clothing, uh, that one's dress should be more related to how one dresses on a holiday than on how one dresses during a regular week. Now, of course, people often do different activities, which we're going to get to um, their, their appropriateness on, on Chol HaMoe. So they do different activities, which it's probably not necessarily appropriate to be wearing holiday garments too. So I certainly recommend to those who, who, 
who go to shul, but even those who don't go to shul, uh, to wear yom tov clothing or, or something nicer than during the regular week, at least for davening, at least for davening, and uh, or if a person doesn't come to shul, get dressed in the morning, right? Let make a, make a breakfast at least be a chol hamoid, meaning a, a proper chol hamoid kind of activity, and then when you go out to your excursion, whatever it may be, then change into garments which are more befitting for that purpose. But, but this is the first thing which he says, you should be wearing uh, clothing and you should be eating in a manner which is more befitting for, for, um, uh, for Yom Tov. Umaharil lavash akpata shal Shabbos. He would even wear a, a special garment of Shabbos um, on Cholmoid. Okay, uh, skip to the next line. The Mishra quotes the, he says, look at the Mishabura, quotes himself, but look at the Mishabura, where I write, Mitzvas v'samachta b'chagecha v'gomer ka'igam ha'cholomoid. We have a mitzvah, which is talking about in the Torah, that you have to rejoice on your holiday. And he says that that mitzvah, to rejoice on your holiday, doesn't just apply to the first days of Yom Tov and the last days of the holiday, but, ref- but it applies as well to chol ha'moid. Okay. Um, skip to the next underlined portion where he says that there isn't an obligation to eat bread, uh, specifically on Cholmoy. However, it is uh, prohibited to fast. One may not fast on Cholmoy, Mikol Makom. Now, it's that last line which is underlined, L'chadchila, mitzvah l'tboa suda al hapas, achas balayla v'achas bayom. That even though one is not obligated, but nonetheless it's a mitzvah. Now, obviously, to say mitzvah, mitzvah here doesn't mean obligation, doesn't mean a commandment, but it's probably mitzvah along the lines of the way people speak colloquially, which is that it's a nice thing. It's a nice thing on, uh, or, or a person fulfills a higher level of celebrating the holiday or of celebrating Cholamoy if a person does have a meal with bread uh, once in the nighttime and once in the, in the daytime. The cave the mitzvah l'chavda v'achila v'shesia, since there is this mitzvah to honor the day with eating and drinking. And a real kind of meal includes bread, and, um, and, and, and even wine, if a person can, can do that. And he says the main thing that makes for a meal is bread. I, I've seen other sources that say that you don't have to do bread twice, bread once is enough. Of course, when, we, when we're eating bread, we're typically going to bench afterwards, and we'll say Yalav Yavah, which we honor the holiday, and the meaning of the Cholmoid, and the holiday aspect of Cholmoid as well, uh, through, that, through that recitation. Um, in addition, there is another viewpoint that says that at least one meal on every day of Cholamoy should, should contain something along the lines of meat. If it's not meat, chicken, turkey, whatever it may be, and or even fish. But in other words, an, uh, an animal product is considered to be of a higher level of meal, of a celebratory meal, than just having your, your, your bagels and, uh, well, hey, lox, <laughs> bagels and cream cheese. Okay, or, or, or whatever else a person may, may eat, so something along the lines of a fish, a bird, or, or, or actual meat um, is, uh, is considered to be more of a celebratory meal in honor of Cholmoy and is to be recommended. Okay, so um, the, the questions which are on the flyer, which I'm, which I'm going to follow through until we get to uh, the second side of the page, is if Cholmoy is indeed, oh, I'm sorry, so just to answer the question, is it more Chol or is it more Moed? So it would seem according to the Mishabura that we just read that he didn't really address the question of whether it's more chol, whether it's more of a weekday, but he certainly said that a person should maintain a moed uh, component to one's existence on chol moed. Okay, so we didn't address the chol yet. If chol moed is indeed a combination, which should guide us more in how we view the intermediate days of Sukkot and, uh, and, and Pesach? Okay, so I think that uh, everybody is familiar with the idea that we make a Havdalah after the first days of Yom Tov. Right? We know that we make Havdalah. And what do we say in Havdalah on the first? It's the same bracha that we say at any full Havdalah, except for one between Shabbos going into Yom Tov, um, when, when Shabbos, when, the, when, the, when a night of Yom Tov is uh, Saturday night. So we make a bracha of, of, in Havdalah of Hamavdil Mekodesh Kodesh that God distinguishes between the holiness of Shabbos to the holiness of Yom Tov. But when we have a, 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 a Yom Tov which ends and leads into Chol HaMoed, the bracha which we make is Amav Yom Kodesh Chol. So clearly we're, we're distinguishing between the holiness of the holiday and the day which is mundane, the sense that it is Chol. 
So um, the question then becomes for us, okay, you know, we're, we're, we're clearly lighting our own candle, which we don't do on in Yom Tov. We transfer flame on Yom Tov, but for Chol, I'm sorry, we don't, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have a, we don't have a flame at, uh, at a typical, unless the second day of Yom Tov is Shabbos, we wouldn't have a flame um, at Havdalah, but, but we could light a flame, we could light a fire for, for, for theoretically, except we don't do that anyway. But, but we know, as soon as Yom Tov is out, you know, we're getting the car, we're going to Louis, whatever it may be, so we're aware that it's cold. We're aware that it is uh, that it is weekend. But in our mind, what should we be experiencing? What is the uh, what is the right balance between the cold component and the moe component? I think that that um, what we're going to see through the through the, the rest of the, uh, the the talk this evening is that while it's certainly cold in many 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 ways, a person should bear in mind always that it is still the holiday. Now, for, for Pesach and, and Sukkot, some of this stuff is easy, right? In other words, uh, on, on Sukkot, we're still eating in the Sukkah. We're still using the Lulav and Esrog on a daily basis. So we're aware that it is, you know, we daven Musaf every day. We say Yal Diabo every day. So in our liturgy, and in our davening, and in our benching, we're aware of the holiday. But the question is, what about the, our behavior? On Pesach, of course, we're, we're not eating chametz. We, we do eat matzah if, we're, if a person wants to eat matzah. It's not obligatory to eat matzah um, for the rest of the holiday, but we're aware that, that, the, that the holiday is not over just because it's, uh, it's Cholomoy. So that aspect is, is certainly there, but the question is, does the whole component of our existence, the weekday component of our existence, does that overtake everything to the point that, aside from those minimal things which we do, we forget that it's still the holiday? Okay, I mean, when the Torah describes these holidays, the Torah says, Shivas Yamim, right, that they're supposed to last for seven days, even though we know the first day is Mikra Kodesh, the last day is Mikra Kodesh. Mikra Kodesh means that it's a special day um, a, a, on a higher level than the days in between. So we are aware of this, but it does say seven days. So seven days does mean that, that it is still um, the, the holiday, despite the fact that it's Chol as well. What is Melacha, is the, next, the next bullet point, the third bullet point on the page, what is Melacha and how is it defined in general, and how is Melacha defined differently on Chalamot? Okay, so in general, we describe the word Melacha, and I, and I, and I prefer not to translate it, because, um, because Melacha doesn't really have a good translation. Melacha means creative work, but what does creative work mean? So when it comes to Shabbos, we, we know that there are 39 categories of, of melacha, which are uh, prohibited on Shabbos, uh, different degrees and different levels for, for, depending on the specific act that we're talking about in question, whether it's a Torah level or a rabbinic level. And those rules generally don't apply when it comes to cholamoy. When it comes to yom tov, we know, for example, I, I shouldn't say generally, generally don't apply. When it comes to yom tov, for example, some melachas, which are forbidden on Shabbos, are permitted on Moed, most notably things related to the preparation of food. Okay, that's, that's, that's the main one. There are also rules related to uh, carrying, which are uh, on, which are, and, and tchum, which are more strict on Shabbos than they are on, uh, on a Yom Tov. But that is, in general, what we're talking about creative work, creative labor. So when we talk about, for example, you know, we have prohibitions against the use of electricity, so it's not because there's a heavy lifting involved in flicking a switch. It has to do with the creativity of what's going on behind the switch. That is the, uh, the source for the, for the prohibition against uh, using the electricity. Similarly, driving a car. Driving a car, there's no major uh, exertion of effort when it comes to driving the car, but there is the creativity which goes with the, with the creation of a spark and the burning of the fuel. Those are things which make the, uh, the act prohibited on Shabbos or on Yom Tov, but on, but on, on um, Cholamoi, not because there is more of a, of a lax nature when it comes to the, uh, the, work, the works of Cholamoi. How is Malacha defined differently on Cholamoi? So take a look at the source which is right under that. Um, it's also below the, uh, that, that little photocopy on the right side. Cholamoi asur b'ktsas Malacha. So Shulchan Aruch tells us that on Cholamoi a person is prohibited from certain or a small amount of creative work. Umutar b'ktsasan and is permitted in some of them. So maybe miktas doesn't really mean small amount, it means some. So there are some which are prohibited and some which are uh, permitted. And the Ramah says, The things which are permitted came based on the viewpoints of the rabbis as far as what they felt was necessary to allow. So in other words, to a large degree, what the Ramah is pointing out is that the things which, were, which are permitted now were permitted by necessity, but not because the ideal of the Torah is to permit them. 
Okay, yes, it's more lenient, but all the details of the things which we're going to be talking about are based on necessity. We're going to see when we get to the rules of, uh, of Cholmoid, more in particular, how that comes into play. Okay, but there are two views which are um, uh, exercised here in the Be'er Hetev and the Mishabura. If you see where it says two views, you see underneath it's A and B, and we'll look at those two right now. What is, uh, as far as what is prohibited, the kinds of melacha, creative work which are prohibited, and the, the Be'er Hetev says, He says, a person needs to, and we saw this before in the Mishabura, but the Be'er Hetev just summarizes it a lot more, a lot more clearly. And he says, you have to honor Cholmoy with food, drink, and, and, and clothing, just like every Yantiv. Okay, so he seems to be equating it, in other words, more focus on the Moe component of the day. Umaril Lovash, Big Day Shabbos, Umaril wore Shabbos clothes. The Onesh of Avaza Es Amoados is Purish Rashi, is referring to Cholmoy. Okay, that there is a, a punishment to the person who neglects or who embarrasses or who denigrates the holiday. And Rashi explains that that refers to Cholomoyed as well. Okay, so what the Bar Hakeem seems to be implying is that the focus of Cholomoyed should be on the Moed component. Yes, there is an allowance for Chol, but there is a heavy, there should be a heavy emphasis on the Cholomoyed being a holiday. When it comes to the things which are per permitted, the Mishnah says the following: Makom Shenagu Amon Lahakel, in the places where, where many people are lenient, Afilu B'davar She'enu Avi, and we're going to see what that means in a moment. Um, even for something which is not a, 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 a terrible loss, so he says, if somebody came along and said that something on Cholamoid is, prohib is prohibited, nobody else should come along and say that it's permitted. However, uh, second. okay, skip to the middle of the third line. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next line. He says the only reason why things are pro pro prohibited on Chalamoid is that people can have the time to eat and to drink and to study Torah. He says nowadays people they eat the drink and I'm not sure what Pachosin means, but I don't think it sounds very, uh, very, very um, positive as far as the focus on Moed goes. But he says because of a he says that, the, that there is more of a, of a prohibition against fooling around than there is a prohibition against doing melacha. He says what a person should avoid doing is making a mockery, making laxity of the time period and should focus on serving God in ways which are which are uh, focusing on the moed, in other words, the, the holiday component, because that's the whole reason for the holiday. The whole reason for the holiday is to get closer to God and fearing God and loving God and, and, and delving into Torah. Uh, that is what the holiday focus should be on. So anything that takes away from that uh, is is to be frowned upon. So what takes away from that? Fooling around. But if a person is doing work, and however malacha is, is defined, as, as we're going to soon see when it comes to Chol Moed. So if a person is doing that, they're not taking away from their relationship with God. Because why does a person work, many people work, so that they can have the, so they can afford to be a, a servant of God, right? If I, if I work in order to earn money so that I can put food on my plate, so that I can afford the things which I need in life, then I can serve God in the way that I'm supposed to. If I'm worrying about too many things, then that takes away from my simcha sechayim, my joy of life. So, joy of life is one thing, appropriate joy of life, fooling around another thing, and that is something which the Mishabura is saying that we, is, is frowned upon. And it's, it's more important to avoid fooling around than it is to avoid malacha. So therefore, malacha, permitted on, on Chalamoid according to this view of the Mishabura? Absolutely, as long as it is purposeful and as long as it is necessary so that a person can get the benefits of what one is supposed to get out of the holiday in general, and Chalamoid in general, and those benefits are to become closer to God through what we call Yiraso, Avaso, fear of God, love of God, and of course, dedicating time to Torah study. What is another aspect of Malacha which is different on Chalamoy? So we have a prohibition on Shabbos which is called a Shvus, a rabbinic decree. A rabbinic decree on, Sh on Shabbos. Um, so some of the things which are prohibited on Shabbos are not prohibited on Chalamoy. 
And th these are examples which uh, are pulled together from the Mishagura, such as riding an animal, climbing a tree, playing music, handling things which are muqta, which are things which are prohibited to use on Shabbos, making plans for after or post Yom Tov Belacha. Normally we don't make plans on Shabbos or um, on Shabbos for things that we need to do after Shabbos, but, but those types of things can uh, be prepared for Chalamoid. Speaking about things that are prohibited on Chalamoid, so normally on Shabbos we don't, we're not supposed to speak about the business, for example, uh, but if you want to speak about things which are prohibited on Chalamoid, talk about doing them afterwards, that is permitted. That's a, that's a Shabbos, but that is permitted. Tevilas uh, Kelem, that means dunking things in a, dunking uh, items that you need for, the, for your kitchen, for example, in a mikvah. Uh, that would normally be prohibited on, on, on Shabbos or, or in Yantam, but we could do it on the Chalmoyed. Writing, tying or untying knots, going to the rabbinic court, these are things which are forbidden on Shabbos but are permissible on Chalmoyed. What about Amir al Akum giving an Anju instructions to do things which are forbidden? So there's a lot, a lot, a lot to, to be discussed about that. We're not going to have time to go into the laws of Amir al Akum. Suffice it to say that um, it's, a little more, it's a little more lenient than Shabbos. At the same time, it really depends on what the circumstance, uh, what the particular ac action that we're talking about is. Uh, in general, with Amir al-Akum, is telling a non-Jew to do something, you can tell a non-Jew to do something for you that you're allowed to do yourself. Uh, but there are things in the Cholomoyed which are a little more lenient, and so therefore a non-Jew could, could technically or theoretically do for you, but it really depends on what the act that we're talking about is, as we're going to see when it gets to, for example, fixing things or building things, uh, what, those, uh, what those rules are. Okay, the last questions which were on the flyer are in the bottom left. Are all Cholomoy trips permitted? And I gave a number of examples, hoping to get uh, people to come because they want to hear that, yes, you can go to Disney, yes, you can go to Universal, <laughs> people have uh, children and grandchildren come visiting, so that's a, a good opportunity, um, as long as it is permitted. And is it permitted? So we'll see when we get through all the, the rest of the rules. Okay, now, when it comes to what issue, what malacha, is permitted on Cholomoyed. So there are, depending on how you look at it, there are five or perhaps six categories. Um, the Mishnabura, when he describes it, he breaks it down into five categories, but I saw another source that kind of addressed it as far as six categories go. So um, I'm gonna give it to you as, as six categories. The first one is for eating. So I mentioned this before, that the Malacha, any, any, basically any kind of preparation that you need to do for food that you need to eat now is permitted on, uh, on, on Cholomoyed. The question is about you know preparing food on Cholomoyed for after Yantif. Uh, not likely that that's even necessary. Most people are going to want to have fresher food. Any Cholomoyed preparations are going to be for either Cholomoyed itself or for Yantif, so you're not really going to have a problem when it comes to that. Um, a malacha which, which, which is meant to stem a significant loss. So this is the main source for those who work on Yom Tov, oh, excuse me, not on Yom Tov, not allowed, on Cholomoyed, okay, those who work on Cholomoyed, it's because if, if they don't work, then they don't get paid, or they get doctor paid. So there is a significant loss when it comes to that. If a person is in the, uh, has their own business, and there are sales, and, and really, you know, uh, there, there, there could come a, a significant loss from, from sales which do not take place, now, if a person is in retail or the like, that is something which is considered to be a dover ha'aved, and a person may participate in such a malacha if there is a significant amount of loss at, at stake. Something which is needed for the holiday, but it's unrelated to food. Okay, so there are different types of things which would be needed for the holiday. So, um, I mean, we, we could, there are all kinds of examples which, which we can come up with. If we were to ask, I'm sure if questions were to come up, but uh, something which is specifically needed for the holiday. So shopping, for example. You shouldn't, you know, one cannot go shopping on, uh, on, on Yom Tov, and so a person shouldn't really go shopping on, uh, on Chol HaMoed, unless you need something for the holiday, right? Uh, a person is, I mean, even just to bring an example of, of something which, which was mentioned before, a person wants to drive a car to Cholomoy. So if the only way you can drive your car is if you get put gas in it, so you can buy gas to put in your car. Okay, if a person needs something for a yuntiv, right, let's say you need to buy food for, for the yuntiv itself, so that, that, can, be, uh, that can be purchased on, uh, on Cholomoy. Needs of the greater community. So when it comes to Tzorchei Rabin, needs of the greater community, so things which might be considered melacha are nonetheless permitted. So fixing roads, for example, collection of garbage, for example, things which are for the for the uh, for the greater good are things which are which are needed. That would also mean, for example, that police and firemen or, or fire workers, maybe there are women who are firemen. I don't know. 
Anyway, uh, they, they they can work on Yontif because it's for the Tzorchira, it's for the needs of the of the of the of the greater community. The next category of malacha that is permitted is a worker who has nothing to eat. A, so there are categories of work which are not permitted. Professional work, for example, that, that is not permitted, which we're, again, we're going to get to on the next side of the page. But if a person who has nothing to eat, and the only way that they can get something to eat is if they work, so that person may engage in work which might otherwise be pro pro prohibited, but this is the only skill that the person has, then it would be uh, uh, permitted. This is a, a very general category. There are, I'm sure there are specifics which we could get, get into if we wanted to get into the nitty gritty, but we don't have the time to, uh, to do that in this uh, more of a survey class. And finally, malacha, which is permitted, is unprofessional work, which is called not, but it's the opposite of malachas uma. A professional, a professional work, um, we'll, we'll see more specific details as we turn over the page. So, like for example, there's a hole in your, in your window, and the flies are coming in. Okay, so you can get a professional to fix that by getting a, a, a new glass, and get it cut so it's the right size, and getting it installed professionally. Or you can tape it up with duct tape and with, uh, with a garbage bag. So putting up the duct tape in the garbage bag is clearly a non-professional fix. <laughs> and on a Cholomoy, that is, that is preferred. Uh, now what happens if there is a, um, if, there, you know, if, you're, uh, if you have a leak that's in your house that is going from, if you have a second floor, even a first floor, it's leaking through and it's ruining your floor. Okay? Now, you can get an unprofessional to do that, but guess what's going to happen? It's going to get a whole lot worse. So that would be something which is considered a davar ha'ave. There's a significant loss at, at hand. If, if I don't repair my window, there isn't going to be a major significant loss. But if I don't repair my floor right away, that's something else. There's a small hole in the wall. So I can patch it up with a little bit of caulk or whatever, or I can get it drywall by a professional and then repaint it. So I can put a little thing in there and necessarily, I'm not a drywall expert, I don't know how to fix that stuff. I mean, I, with YouTube, you can fix anything. You got it, but, uh, but um, but still, I'm not a professional. A professional will do a much better job. And the same would apply for any type of minor repair, as long as it's done in a manner which is a non-professional way. And by the way, you can even get a professional to do it in a non-professional way. One of the examples which we'll see relates to sewing. If there's a hole in a garment, assuming that you need the garment. So the, the, the preference is to get it done, to get it repaired in a non-professional manner, where the stitches are further apart, it's not as neat, and then taking care of the, it the, in a professional manner um, after the holiday. And who knows, if a professional, if a professional uh, seamstress, for example, knows that you're going to give her the job um, after, or after the holiday, maybe she won't even charge you for a, for a schlocky job, because she knows that she's going to get it fixed up. What? Very unlikely. Okay, whatever. I, you know, there is a debate. So it depends. Is she Jewish or not Jewish? If she's not Jewish, she's going to charge you anyway. If she's Jewish, so you, you can make the argument, you know, you really should be doing this for free because it's Cholomoy, and that is a rule of Cholomoy. But, uh, but you also should be nice and give her the, 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 the full fix-up job afterwards. Okay. Other questions raised in the course of the Shulchan Aruch's comments about Cholomoy. So, uh, the way I uh, categorize this is hopefully pretty clear. You have the action on the left side, uh, and these are essentially following the order of the, um, the ideas that are reported in the, in the table of contents of the Shulchan Aruch, what is permitted and what is uh, prohibited. So I want to uh, explain, I, I don't need to read through all of these, uh, although probably in the course of explaining I, I, I will, but um, the ones which need a little more explanation, um, I'll go into in a little more detail. So when it comes to shaving, so shave, the, the Shulchan Aruch talks about shaving and, hair, and, and, and haircuts. Haircuts and shaving have different categories um, owing to uh, what, what they do. And of course, shaving nowadays is significantly different than shaving in the time of the Shulchan Aruch. In the time of the Shulchan Aruch, when it talks about shaving, it probably talks more about the trimming of a beard as opposed to shaving as we do now. Um, the idea that, uh, that men, for example, are clean shaven in the Jewish community is a relatively new idea um, in the sense that it, it goes back certainly, you know, maybe a little more than 100 years, 200 years, but not more than that. Um, I mean, maybe people were doing it, but if they were using a razor, that was against the laws of the Torah. Uh, there were, what do they call it, the, 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 pil, the pillatory, what the pillatory. Is, did, did I get it right? Yeah. The pillatory powders which were used at some point, um, and of course nowadays with a lift and cut razor, a lift and cut shaver, an, an, an electric one, which is uh, permitted according to many, many post game, um, so it, it has changed the game when it comes to that. So here are the rules of the Shulchan Aruch with reference to a person who is allowed to get a haircut. Only if the person was unable to take care of it before Yom Tov because of the following reasons. 
the person was a captive in some way, or was in jail, or was in cherem, uh, they were excommunicated and therefore not allowed to shave, or, or not allowed to, uh, to, to get, a, to, get a, right, to take a trim. A person had taken a vow, perhaps, not to trim their beard, or they arrived from a long trip. Now, nowadays, that, that's a harder, um, a harder argument to make, simply because anybody who goes on a long trip can carry, uh, can get a, you can get a haircut anywhere, you can carry a shaver with you anywhere. So that's not really a, a, a good argument to make. Although sometimes a person is in a in a harried situation and is unable to to, to or can't really find the time um, to do so. Okay, but but the idea is that if you weren't able to take care of a yanta because of an external circumstance, then you may do it on on cholamoy, okay, not on yanta, but on cholamoy. And similarly, when it comes to shaving. Now, Rabbi Tam has a very interesting idea with Rabbi, which Rabbi Moshe Feinstein actually uh, quotes and supports and says that if a person actually did take care of it on Yontif, uh, on Erev Yontif, before Yontif, uh, did take a haircut or did shave, so guess what? You can maintain that once Cholomoe comes because you're so punctilious about being uh, neat and clean shaven. Um, in in uh, Rabbi Salavechik and uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein were, were, were noted as saying that if a person shaves regularly, then it's actually an enhancement of yad to, to be clean shaven. And they may even suggest that, it, that one is obligated to, to shave if a person is, shaves on a, regular, uh, on a regular basis. Mustache trimming, if a mustache gets in the way of the eating, it's completely allowed. Uh, anyone who needs to uh, shave for, for medical reasons uh, may do so. And of course, if there is a, a simcha such as a bris, or a pinyon aben, which is uh, dependent upon a specific date in time, that person may, may shave. When is it prohibited? Haircuts are shaving for people who could have done so before yantiv but didn't. If you, if a person neglected it, then they're not allowed to take care of it on, uh, on yantiv unless you know the other reason was that they that they that they were uh, prevented from because of circumstances. And as far as the upsharon, upsharon is, is accustomed to uh, give a haircut to a, a boy, a first haircut on his third birthday. So if his third birthday happens to be Yontif or Cholomoy, there is a debate as to whether that haircut could take place uh, during Cholomoy. Okay, cutting fingernails, um, it's generally prohibited. Of course, a person should try to cut their nails in honor of Yontif. Uh, when is it permitted? Is Sephardim completely allowed? There is a viewpoint that says if, if a person cut them before Yantav, it's the same thing as the, the Rabbeinu Tam view with reference to haircuts. That if a person keeps their nails trimmed um, on, in honor of Yantav, then they can keep them trimmed in honor of Cholomoid. And certainly to uh, cut them on the last day of Cholomoid, which is Arab Yantav, that would be uh, permitted. Someone who regularly cuts nails before Shabbos as well can certainly cut them on Arab Yantav. Which is chalmoi, uh, and there is a there is a, a, a practice of boils. If you want, I can show you afterwards how they prepare their fingernails. If a boil wants to prepare his fingernails for his breast, he can do that as well. And of course, women who go to the mikvah, uh, which is for a mitzvah, may, may may cut their fingernails. Laundering clothing. So let's take a look at what's prohibited. Anything not needed for yom tov or uh, look at that spell check, what it does. I wrote Chol Hamoid and it turned out Child Hamoid. Okay, for Chol Hamoid, okay, anything not needed for Yontif or for Chol Hamoid, um, it, it should not be washed. Uh, a person shouldn't get a professional shoe shine, but a person can do one's own on, 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 uh, um, by, by oneself. Now, when it comes to things which are uh, needed for yontem, so we have the same exceptions as haircuts, which means that if a person was unable to do laundry because of those reasons, that person can do laundry on chalaboy. Things we wash after one use can be washed on chalaboy, and the examples are, are given before you. Again, as long as they are needed. And if you don't need the tablecloth because you have another tablecloth, if you don't need the dish towel because you have another dish towel, if you don't need the underwear because you have plenty of underwear, then don't wash them on, uh, on chalaboy. Children's clothing, presumably, especially if they get dirty all the time, um, and, uh, and, and, and we run out of them, they can be washed on, uh, on Cholomoy. And spot cleaning or necessary soaking for something, which you're not going to wash now, but if you don't soak it, or if you don't spot clean it now, the stain could set and ruin the clothing, well, that falls into the category of Dabra Ha'avet, something which, is, which could be a potential, uh, a potential loss, so that spot cleaning can be done, and the necessary soaking as well can be done, even if the actual laundering is not going to take place. Okay, cleaning out one place completely or putting its contents elsewhere, so um, if it's not for the need of the holiday, then it is prohibited. Um, the animal waste, uh, now this is not something which we have to deal with as much, we don't really have uh, barns or lots of animals floating around, or not floating around, walking around, I 
goats, chickens, we don't have that, so it's not uh, a concern of ours, but once upon a time it was. Um, a person may clean out one place and move things within a courtyard, or there is a viewpoint that says that if, if a person is going to get a tremendous satisfaction or simcha out of moving into a new house that a person has, uh, has purchased, then a person can do that on Falmoi. Of course, we all know that moving is very stressful. So if you can do that before Yantif, or perhaps after Yantif, it might be a better idea. But of course, if, if again, we're talking about a Davra Ave, right? if a person has to you know, balance two places, two homes, and has to pay for both, although it overlap with a couple of days, might not be a significant loss, but still, if that's a concern, then, <coughs> then a person can do that. And of course, if a person is concerned for theft, then things can be moved to a place which is more secure. Dealing with one's animals, so most people don't have uh, animals like horses and, uh, and donkeys and, and such. Most people might have a dog or a cat. So what's permitted, if you're not going to ride your dog or cat, okay, uh, what is permitted is to, is, to, is to care for the animals. Grooming and medical care, um, but mating animals, this is a good one to know, should not be taking place. We should not be putting the animals in a situation where they can mate. On, if they find each other, that's, you know, that's their business. But we shouldn't be, uh, be putting them together on, uh, on, on, on Philippine. Building and breaking. Okay, so I mentioned this uh, in passing before. So, new construction should not take place on Chalamoy, but as I mentioned before, unprofessional repairs, so things which are a, uh, a quick fix, um, but are not professionally done, uh, should, uh, is the better way to go rather than a full professional repair on Cholomoy, something which is necessary for living. So I gave the example before of a leaky, uh, of a leaky pipe or a broken pipe that ruins your effective, your effective living space. So that can be taken care of perhaps in a professional manner because that's what's necessary. And of course, dangerous situation. If you have a sinkhole in your, uh, in your living room, yeah, that's a problem, right? Okay, or in your driveway, right? So those are dangerous situations. Those should be, uh, hopefully, nobody was injured, and, uh, and of course that can be taken care of in a professional manner on, on Cholomoy. Okay, tying and sewing. So non-professional knots and weavings, there's a fishing net done in a way which is non-professional, is permitted, but take a look at the, uh, the Shulchan Aruch when it comes to uh, what is prohibited. So this is, a, this is a star telling you to go to the bottom, so we're looking at the bottom right, the part which is in Hebrew, and again I'll translate a person may not fix one's clothing or one's torn uh, shoes. And a person cannot tell a non-Jew to fix them. However, so if, if you're going to do it in a, in a shinui, in other words, let's say uh, a, somebody who normally sews with the right hand is going to do it with the left hand or they do some other way which is different than normal, so they can do it for the sake of the holiday, but again, it's not a full and a completely professional repair. The takanam tzas means a small repair. If a person needs a certain garment on the holiday, if he is a, a hedyot, means a non-professional, and doesn't do the repair quickly, like me, if I need to, if I need to sew something, it takes me a long time. I don't do a great job. It's adequate, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't last. So I'm sure that anyone who's not a professional has a similar. Uh, if you if you know how to handle a, a a needle and thread in any way, so that would be okay. But if a person is a very fast professional and knows how to work quickly and knows how to do things very nicely, that person should 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 instead make an unprofessional repair. That's what I said before, but here you see it inside. The she tfiros rechavos, you should make wider stitches, the tfira achas namala, achas namata, one on top, one, one below. In other words, in a manner which is not the way that, that a professional would uh, would do it. Okay, kishine hakelev, that look like the, do, the teeth of a dog. And the Ramah says, v'cholagam yachmira, that's called for v'shinu he said, and he says anybody should, should be strict about uh, about stitching in such a manner. Says it doesn't help if the you know the, if the professional normally uses let's say the thumb and the index finger and now uses the uh, the middle finger and the index finger or the uh, or the ring finger the index, and, the, and the thumb rather. So that is it's certainly a change, but that that doesn't help anybody. In other words, it, it, it doesn't work in the sense of it being um, a, a real change. It has to be a kind of change which is recognizable. And what's recognizable is not in the way, in the manner in which the uh, the, the the seamstress or the uh, the tailor held the 
the, the, the needle, what's recognizable is in the way that the stitches come out. So a person should be careful, again, the, the bottom line is we're looking for non-professional uh, work that is per permitted on Cholmoid and professional stuff should be avoided until after Cholmoid. Writing, professional writing, like writing a Torah, for example. So in other words, for halakhic reasons, what's considered to be professional writing is something along the lines of what a sofer does because it has to be neat, it has to be precise, that's professional. Anything which is done by, by, by a regular person's handwriting is not considered to be a professional um, writing, unless, I guess you, you can say, unless a person is a calligrapher, for example, and does artwork, that might be considered professional, but then it boils down to the question of, is a person doing something in which, if they don't do it, they're gonna lose a significant amount of money. So unless it's very timely, for example, it's hard to make that argument. A calligrapher might get up and say, I need this in a week. So if you, if you don't need it, uh, if they don't need it right away, the person can wait until after you have so then a person should do that. But in any case, writing, non-professional writing, uh, a regular handwriting perhaps, perhaps should be done with a shinui, uh, you know, use the left hand or, or slant the paper. Uh, there are different changes that a person can make in the writing to allow it. Fixing a Torah to make it uh, permissible to use is allowed. Finishing a Torah for a person, if a family is making a seal on a Torah, a Torah, they're dedicating a Torah, you can finish it because it's already been written. So it's not really considered to be professional writing, they're just filling in letters. If a person wants to write down Torah thoughts, a person can do that uh, because they don't want to forget them. Checks, business transactions, uh, tests, if there are students in, uh, in, in college, for example, or, or any school who need to take tests. All manners of writing on a screen is not considered to be writing, whether it's typing using a, a smartphone, that's not considered to be writing, which is prohibited on Chol Hamoid. Okay, uh, marrying, marry, it's pretty clear what I've, what I've written here. Uh, the, the laws of, of dealing with a death in, in mourning are a lot more, um, there, there's a lot more to talk about, in particular in terms of how we figure out when mourning begins. We don't have mourning, for example, on Yom Tov, but we do bury on Yom Tov, or on Chol Hamoid, rather. We, and even on the second day of, of Yom Tov, Yom Tov Sheni may, may even bury. Um, what it translates to, though, is only with reference to Shiva. Shiva never begins during Chol Moed. If somebody dies on Yom Tov or on Chol Moed, so we would bury the person as soon as possible, but the, uh, the Shiva would actually begin, there are different viewpoints. One viewpoint is that the Shiva begins, the second day of Yom Tov is considered to be the first day of Shiva, even though we don't observe Shiva on that day. So it's an interesting to note, uh, just to, hopefully it never happens and we don't have to deal with such a question, but if it does come up, then, uh, then that is, that is uh, one, one piece of information. And, um, and finally, we have eulogies and fasting which do not take place on, um, if, uh, if a death or a burial takes place during Solomon. I want to point out a couple of things which we have here. Number one, on the very bottom left, I, I put here, I see also we have in our shul library, I have them photocopied, some of the articles which Rabbi Ari Enkin in the Dalit Amos book, the, the uh, Chani and I are Platkin, uh, donated the Dalit Amos books of Rabbi Ari Enkin. So he has a number of articles about Chol Moed. Number, number one is called Working on Chol Moed, and he, uh, that's one. He has another one about Chol Moed, meat, wine, and clothing, how that should be uh, enhanced to, uh, to enhance the active. Shaving on Cholamoid, which talks about haircuts as well. Uh, what's the next one? Writing on Cholamoid. And that is it. So those are, if anybody wants to read further in them, those are, I gave you the page numbers in those books. And that is in our library. We also have this book here in the library called Kitzer Halachos, which talks about the laws of Yom Tov and Cholamoid. And there are about 100 pages dedicated to the laws of Cholamoid, which is also in our library. One final one is that in the Mishnabura, this nice Mishnabura, uh, Oz Hadar. so in the very beginning, before the actual Shulchan Aruch, so this is for the Hebrew uh, readers and, and speakers, he has a, a summary of the laws on one, two, three, four pages, all the way until he gets to, uh, I'm sorry, the laws of, uh, of the fast days. So there you have another, another summary of uh, the different things which have uh, been, been discussed this evening. The bottom line is that when it comes to uh, Chol Moed, that there should be an awareness that this is a holiday as well. It's not just Chol and everything goes. What about the questions? What about the questions about the water park, apple picking, hiking, baseball games, sporting events, movies? So all these things, if they enhance the Simchas Yom Tov, if they enhance a person's joy on the holiday, so they would be permitted. The only exception to this would be apple picking, because apple picking is a real malacha. Okay, so what's, or, or any type of uh, fruit picking. And, it's, and so what would be the answer? How do you make it something that you're allowed to do on, uh, on Cholomoy? Sure. Uh, 
and I'm more than a shinui if you're going to use them on Cholamoi. Okay? If it's Tzorche Amoi. So if you're going to be baking apple pie, if you're picking strawberries and you're going to be making strawberry pie, strawberry shortcake, strawberry ice, whatever it may be, may, may be. So you happen to pick a little more than you needed, but you have to use them. You can't just pick them and say, okay, leave them there. Uh, you know, some people pick the apples just for the fun of picking them and then they leave them. But you got to buy the apples, you got to buy the strawberries, whatever it is that, that may be picked so that they are used. And this way it falls into the category of, uh, of something which is, uh, which is permitted. Okay, but all these other activities, um, if they're within the spirit of the giving a person joy and enhancing a person's yantiv, uh, yantiv experience, then they would be per per permitted. So we should all remember that Chalmoyd is a, is a time uh, in which it, it is still yantiv, dress that way, act that way, eat, enjoy, be merry, etc. And, uh, and remember that it is moed at the same time as we enjoy the different things which we do uh, for, for chol, as long as they fit into the different categories of melacha, which is permitted on, uh, on, on chol and moed. Does anybody have any questions or clarifications? Oh, yes, that's a good question or clarification. I love it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for coming, and have a good evening.